Hello, my name is Lavana Zeller Williams Bracci, and I'm here to present the session Building Musicality with Ukulele. A little bit about myself I am from Portland, Oregon, and currently it is the beginning of May. It's been raining today, it's a little bit sunny, but still a little chilly. I am presenting to you on ukulele because I use it and I believe in it. I am the co-author of Ukulele, Ukulele, Ukulele Made Easy, Volumes 1 and 2. We have Teacher Edition and Student Edition. Our Teacher Editions have ORF arrangements for you to use with an ensemble. And just in case you don't have a lot of ukuleles, you can use your other instruments in your classroom. I've used these with my own students. My sister, my co-author, uses them with her students, and we hope that you will find it as a resource so that you can use it with your students, too. Please allow me to introduce to you George. I would like to start off by making an introduction. George! This is George. George is my service dog, and you will see him in and out uh, as we record this session for you. It's his job to take care of me. He goes with me every day to school. He has his own uh, staff badge for our school. And every week during our uh, online learning right now, George and I provide videos and sing-alongs for our students at our school and it's called ZW and George, that's ZWB and George on YouTube if you're interested. And uh, George and I that way can provide something for our students that's a little bit more normal as we all get through this very unique spring that we have with the COVID virus. So I'm gonna start off with the reason why this session began. In 2016, I transferred to the school that I'm working at right now, and I quickly found out that the previous music teacher did not teach according to the national music standards that we should be teaching. Instead, he taught the kids on xylophones, called them marimbas, and they played one song all year long with mallets up here they learned no technique in any way they never saw a rhythm they never saw a written melody nothing musical in any way shape or form and then the following year they played the same song I'm not lying it was just a, a, an interesting experience, I should have to say, to find that out. My second lesson with my students, never seen a rhythm, could not identify a ta or a tt, had never seen any written music, didn't know what a treble clef was, what the staff was, any, there was nothing musical in their education from the previous teacher. And as a result, I realized I needed to teach my students musical concepts, musical ability, all of those things quickly. And so the methods that I used are what I build my sessions on right now. I have several different sessions that I have put together to show exactly how I go about teaching these students who hadn't had any musical experience and yet needed to be brought to grade level ability as soon as they could. Ukulele was one of those where I was building their musicality by using ukulele. So that is the purpose of this session and I'd like to bring you along with me and show you what we did. This is a picture of my fourth graders that first year where they played ukuleles in their program in the month of April. They practiced for about six weeks to get to that level. We're going to begin with warm-ups on C6 and C. We are going to start with 
where I start students from the very beginning. I start teaching in kindergarten and my reasoning is this. It may not be a long unit. It may be two lessons. It may be four. This year was the first year I had four ukulele lessons with my kindergartners. And it was simply because of the group of kids that I had. It was a great group of kiddos and they could handle a fourth lesson. Typically I go two or three lessons with kindergarten. And we start with the C6 chord. C6 is open strings. Very, very easy. So I start by talking about the parts of the ukulele. So we talk about here is the body of the ukulele and here's the neck and if this is the neck, what's this? It's the head. And then we talk about the tuning pegs and I very, am very, very clear when I say do not touch these. <laughs> and I talk about how I had a student tune them once, he was a fifth grader and a string popped off the bridge and hit him right under the eye and I say, is it a safe choice? No. If they need it tuned, they bring it to me. We talk about the tuning pegs. We talk about the nut right here. And on my student ukuleles, the nut is white. And I talk about how mine is black and theirs is white. We talk about the fretboard and the strings and how this is the bridge and the bridge holds the strings over this which is the sound hole and I say it's an ingenious name it's a hole where the sound comes out they call it the sound hole so by describing all of the parts of the ukulele my students know where to put their hands because I will say okay you're going to take the head of the ukulele and as I'm facing them I'm having them turn their ukulele the correct direction, which of course I am not their mirror. So I say take it and face it towards that wall over there. And I say put the neck on your hand, slide your hand all the way to the nut, keep your fingers straight out, your thumb is, you're going to hold it by the shoulders, hug it to your belly, thumb goes over the sound hole and you're going to thump, you're going to strum straight down and so as we begin to play all of my students have their hands in the correct position I prefer to teach with partners and this is a very key point when you're starting with young children partners that way you have one student playing and the other student is watching their hands making sure their fingers are in the right place or if they need help to hug it to their belly or to strum all of those aspects when you have partners you now have 15 more pairs of eyes to look after these kids and that way you don't have to stop what you're doing you can go at a quicker pace because they are watching each other here's a key point I've been I've heard that when you lecture students they will retain 7% when they get to do it themselves and teach other people they will retain 93 partners work wonders I recommend working with partners so we start with our C6 chord and I will have them do four strums down we go one two three four and then I'll say your, uh, we'll trade partners, they'll do that a couple times, four times in a row. Then we introduce the C chord. I say one, two, three on the bottom string. For the younger kids, I keep the one and two there for the C chord, simply because we don't need to mess with it. But for when I get to first grade, I'll say take one, two away because they don't need to stay there or second grade is when I introduce the F chord so they need to have um, those two fingers free but at the beginning kindergarten first grade one two three bottom string they can stay there so for the C one two three hi George and he's back again he'll just sit here <laughs> all right so one two three bottom string and then we'll strum four. One, two, three, four. Ready? Let's strum again. And a one, two, three, four. Very good. Here we go. And a one, two, three, four. One more time. I strum again. And a one, two, 
three, four. The reason why I'm stopping in four beats in between is I'm getting them used to we're going to change chords. I also have this opportunity to correct students if I see there needs to be correction. Then we get the transition from C6 to C and I will do this with kindergarten and teach them that this is what we're doing. We're just altering the one finger. So we'll start with C6 and I'll get say one, two, three, four, put your finger on for C and a one, two, three, four, take it off, fingers out. One, two, three, four, back to C, finger on, one, two, three, four. And however I need to adjust and whatever I need to say in between, adjusting to the C6 and the C. I will sing with them songs on C itself for things like Row, Row, Row Your Boat or Frere Jaca. All of those are on just plain old C. And then we'll get to the C7 chord. And this is a great one for second grade because we, and I'll say this for a moment, C7 chord, lime in the coconut, lime in the coconut, you drink it all up and then the whole song is C7, that's all you do. Look it up, the words are there, it's never ending, but kids can just strum C7 and they love doing it together. I'll usually switch and they have to hand it to their partner in the middle of the song and we keep going and we sing the song together. So C6, C, C7, putting that together. We will now practice the strumming pattern one and three, four on the C chord. This next one is something that I will start in first grade. Kindergarten, if I've got that batch of kids, but we've got the C chord, and by this time it's one finger on C, it's the third finger, so one, two, three, third finger, bottom string, C chord. I have them do this strum pattern, one, and three, four. One and three, four. Join me. One and three, four. One and three, four. Very good. So that pattern goes to this song. Frere Jaca Tango. Do you have your C chord ready? Okay, we're going to do that strumming pattern together. Ready? And one and three, four, one, and let's sing. Frere Jaca, Frere Jaca, dormez-vous, dormez-vous. Sonne le matina, sonne le matina, din, din, don, din, din, don. Are you sleeping? Are you sleeping, Brother John? Brother John, morning bells are ringing, morning bells are ringing, ding, ding, dong, ding, ding, dong. By using this strumming pattern, we now have introduced rhythm. And you could write rhythm on the board of a dotted quarter note, an eighth note, ta, ta. So ta, I say ta, ti, ta, ta. Your choice of however you say it, but now you've introduced rhythm. Do you understand how we're building musicality now? Exactly. They're able to identify that that is not ta ta ti ti ta or just plain old ta's. You've introduced rhythm. For our next sample, we're going to take the C7 chord and we're going to play this pattern. One, two, one, two, three. All right, we have second graders. We have a C7 chord. We've already done lime in the coconut. Now I'm going to teach them a strumming pattern. And I want them to do the following. They're going to go one, two, one, two, three. And a one, two, one, two, Three. Try that with me. C7 is the first finger on the bottom string, first fret. Here you go. One and a two and a one, two, three. 
one and a two and a one, two, three. Excellent. Please notice the highlighted words in the first verse. These correlate with our strumming pattern. So it would go like this. Put on the skillet, slip on the lid. Mama's gonna make a little shortening bread. That ain't all she's gonna do. Mama's gonna make a little coffee too. For the chorus, we're gonna do straight strums, like strum, 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 and then back to the strumming pattern for the verses. So let's start at the beginning with two of the pattern. Ready? And a one, and a two, and a one, two, three, again, and a one, and a two, and a here we go. And put on the skillet, slip on the lid, Mama's gonna make a little shortening bread. That ain't all she's gonna do. Mama's gonna make a little coffee too. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. Mama's little baby loves shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby loves shortening bread. Three little children lying in bed. Two were sick and the other most dead. Sent for the doctor and the doctor said, Give those babies some shortening bread. Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby love shortening bread. Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby love shortening bread. When those children sick and fed, heard them talk about shortening bread. Popped up well to dance and sing. Skipped around and cut the pigeon wing. Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby shortening bread mama's little baby love shortening shortening mama's little baby love shortening bread slip to the kitchen slip up the lid filled my pockets full of shortening bread stole the skillet stole the lid stole the gal making shortening bread mama's little baby love shortening shortening mama's little baby love shortening bread mama's little baby love shortening shortening mama's little baby love shortening Paid six dollars for the skillet, paid six dollars for the lid. Spent six months in jail eating shortening bread. And a mom's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby love shortening bread. Mama's little baby love shortening, shortening. Mama's little baby love shortening bread. And pattern. And a two, and a one, two, three. One more time. And a one, and a two, and a one. Okay, next is the F to C7 transition. And yes, I do introduce this to my second graders. I will have them already on their C7 chord and I say, okay, now we're going to add the F chord and they freak out because they know it has two fingers. I tell them by this, okay, take your C7 chord. You're gonna take that first finger, put it on the second string up. Your second finger goes all the way to the top string. It's gonna sound like this. And I'll have them strum with just the F for a while. And as our warm up, I'll say, okay, now that you know the F, I want you to do the F and then slide it to the C7. When I explain the transition, I go from the tip of my finger to the flat of my finger. From the tip of my finger to the flat of my finger very easy transition for them to get. I am now going to show you how I go about teaching my students a new song. I would put the chords on the board along with the strumming pattern that they would be doing. Now in this case we would just use straight strums but the pattern would be what we see in the box on the right. So F9, C7, 6, F3, C7, 3, F1. So they would strum and practice as their warm up like this, starting with F. F, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, C, seven, two, three, four, five, six, F, two, three, C, seven, two, three, F. The students are then shown the lead sheet with the chords above the words. And having practiced that pattern, they know what to expect. And oftentimes when we first start playing this, 
I'll have the partner counting the strums and helping them change chords where they need to while they're looking at the music and singing the words. So let's start at the beginning with our F of Clementine. Here we go. In a cavern by a canyon, excavating for a mine, dwelt a miner, 49er, and his daughter, Clementine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling, Clementine, you were lost and gone forever, dreadful, sorry, Clementine. Light she was and like a feather, and her shoes. She ducklings to the water every morning just at nine. Struck her foot against a splinter, fell into the foaming brine. Oh, my darling, oh, my darling, oh, my darling Clementine. You were lost and gone forever, dreadful sorry Clementine. Rosy lips above the water. Let's take a look at another song with F and C7. According to the box on the right, our pattern is F6, C7, 3, F9, C7, 3, F1. It will go like this. Let's do it together. Ready? And F2, 3, 4, 5, 6, C7, 2, 3, F. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, C7, two, three, F. Bottle of Pop is considered one of my students' favorite songs to sing. When they got to learn the chords for it, they were really excited. The chords are the same throughout the entire song, so it makes it easy for them to learn. And once again, I would have their partner during warm-ups count how many chords each time and that way the student gets used to the transition. Eventually the students are able to hear when that transition needs to happen and that's an exciting moment for them because they realize that they can do this song. Let's start it from the beginning with our F chord. Are you ready? Here we go. One bottle of pop, two bottle of pop, three bottle of pop, four bottle of pop, five bottle of pop, six bottle of pop, seven bottle of bottle of pop. Don't put your trash in my backyard, my backyard, my backyard. Don't put your trash in my backyard, my backyard's full. Fish and chips and vinegar, vinegar. So 
Now we're going to take a look at strumming patterns. I always teach down with the thumb and up with the finger. Now, I know that ukulele or guitar professionals would say something different, but once again, I'm teaching children in a school setting. And so I apologize if I may be doing something differently than others may think. This is how I found it easy to work with. I have a lot of students with very sensitive fingers. Even my students who are on the spectrum, that is my main concern. Sometimes we will use those rubber thumbs turned inside out so the prickly part is against their thumb. And that way they can use it that way. But if we're doing a down and an up strum, sometimes they'll have one on their thumb and one on their first finger. Sensitive fingers cannot go on the fingernails. I myself can't go on the fingernails because they will split. <laughs> so this is how I found that I can do it where I'm not hurting myself and I can teach it. So down with the thumb, up with the finger. Okay, so if I'm going down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, I often leave it to my students who have lessons to pick strumming patterns and giving them the opportunity to choose, as you will see on the chart in the next slide, there are different ways of strumming. And I will let them choose, okay, what's our warm up today? Okay, we're gonna be on C and we're going to do number, pick a number, okay? And by letting them choose, I'm allowing them to use their expertise or something that they have learned that they can share and we can all try it together. The important thing is, is that you do not expect your students in a classroom setting. In a special class that's different, but in a classroom setting, don't expect perfection, but allow them to try because that way they will have more of a feeling of success. Did you try? Yes? Well, that's all I'm asking for them to try. So strumming patterns, especially for older kids, it makes a great warm up. Let's take a look at a variety of strumming patterns. As you can see, number one is completely down strum or a thumb strum, as we could call it. If you look at number three, that is adding the index finger on the up. So it's down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up. As you can tell from the list, there is quite a variety of different ways of strumming. And I encourage you to perhaps stop the video and practice a few of these to help you find what you are comfortable with in strumming and perhaps comfortable with what you would like to teach your students. Different songs can call for different types of strumming. If you look at number nine, number nine is the strum that is used for someone to lava. So it is down, down, up, down, up, down, up. Number 14, all up strokes would be like count on me for Bruno Mars. Or perhaps you take number 10 and include that down strum on that down beat. Down, up, 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 up. That might help you. Well, figure out if that's what you want your students to play. As we are looking at these, um, these strums, for the next song, I would like to use number 13, which is down, down, up, down, down. Or we could even go to number four, which is down, down, up, down, down, up. We're going to use that for this next song. Using that strumming pattern, down, down, up, down, down. Let's do the crawdad song together. Let's start on C and do two measures of C. One, two, here we go. You get a line and I'll get a pole, honey. Hey. 
to skip to Malou, which uses a C and a G7 chord. And you can choose any strumming pattern that you want to use for this. I personally will switch it up while I'm playing all the time. And when I play with kids and they're singing, it doesn't really matter, in my opinion. Um, I often will do the um, off beats on this song because when my students perform this, they're playing xylophones as well as ukuleles and that downbeat is very heavy. So sometimes I will throw that offbeat in there with my students so that they can um, kind of stay in time together. And that's kind of my metronome way of playing. So it's up to you however you want to do it. We're gonna start with uh, our C chord. Uh, two measures. One, two, here we go. Oh wait, that, oh, that was just one measure. <laughs> Let's try it again. One, a two, one measure, go. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my partner, what'll I do? Lost my partner, what'll I do? Skip to my Lou, my darling. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou, my darling. I'll find another one prettier than you. I'll find another one prettier than you. I'll find another one prettier than you. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Flies in the buttermilk shoe, fly shoe. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou, my darling. There's a little red wagon painted blue. There's a little red wagon painted blue. There's a little red wagon painted blue. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Cows in the cornfield, what'll I do? Cows in the cornfield, what'll I do? Cows in the cornfield, what'll I do? Skip to my Lou, my darling. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Can't get a red bird, Jay Bird will do. Can't get a red bird, Jay Bird will do. Can't get a red bird, Jay Bird will do. Skip to my Lou, my darling. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Lou, Lou, skip to my Lou. Skip to my Lou, my darling. 
I've included this photo of my fourth graders performing for a very specific reason. If I could draw your attention to the girl holding the purple ukulele, notice that her ukulele is facing the opposite direction of the other performers. She is left-handed. And this is my policy regarding left-handed students. I only have 15 ukuleles and they are my personal property. And because of that, me doing partner work with my students, I do not have the opportunity nor the time to restring an entire ukulele for left-handed players. So left-handed students learn the same direction that right-handed students learn. The only reason why this student is playing left-handed is because that is her own personal ukulele that she brought from home. That is the only time that I allow left-handed ukulele playing. In just a little bit, I'm going to be answering some of the most popular questions that I get when I do this session. And I forgot one, so I'm going to answer that here. The reason why I do not use picks for ukulele and instead use thumbs and fingers, first of all, it's a lot quieter to use fingers. And I don't use picks, especially guitar picks. Those are made for steel strings. Uh, but you could use felt picks. Those are made for nylon strings on a ukulele. I don't use picks because I usually end up having those picks stuck inside the ukulele in the sound hole. And then you got to spend a lot of time trying to get it out. And the students that I have, I have a lot of students on the spectrum because we have some special classes of those students and that's exactly where they go. So I use fingers instead and for those sore fingers I use those little rubber thumbs. So you can use whatever you choose to. But bear in mind that you're going to have to be picking picks out of sound holes. And uh, I don't envy you. <laughs> anyway, more questions to be answered right here. In the meantime, I hope that uh, this has given you the encouragement you need to use ukulele with your students. Kids absolutely love to play them. And if you haven't tried them already, I hope that this gives you the encouragement to do so because they're going to love it. Good luck. Okay, in my session, I usually use this time as a question and answer time. And I have a few questions from people that I will answer. And hopefully it will answer the questions you may have. First of all, why do I start in kindergarten? Here's the reason why. If I start with the parts of the instrument, the body, the neck, the head, all of those things. If I start in kindergarten and I start with how to put it on your hand, how to hold it correctly, I have saved myself so much time once they get to first grade. And I can pull it out at any time and say, hey, you know this chord, let's do this song. Also, I have so many students that love to play that they go home and they tell mom and dad, and then what does mom and dad get them for Christmas? gets them a ukulele. So by the time I have them in second grade where I do have them play ukulele in their concert, they are knowledgeable about being able to play it correctly and we have more success. I'm able to pull it out at any time, have them play it, we put it back. That's the reason why I start in kindergarten. Why do I not use tablature? I don't use tabs because I don't play tabs myself. I choose to use chords because kids are going to want to play and sing at the same time. There are very few times that they would be playing the melody while they're singing. They want to play the chord while they're singing, just like anybody would use a guitar and sing with it too. So I always play with chords from the very, very beginning. I don't bother um, with doing melody unless I'm using it for that purpose. I have taught melody and the scale on the ukulele using Ebenezer Sneezer, which works out really, really well for students to learn um, 
the steps of the scale but only if I'm working on that as a unit and typically I don't have the opportunity to do that with this instrument I will use a melodic instrument such as a xylophone or a glockenspiel instead so they can see it in a keyboard form I feel that if they can visualize it it's a little bit easier for them than to do it on ukulele. For more advanced students, definitely. I strongly suggest that you put that in there, but I personally will just go with the chords. To answer the question why I use partners, I use partners simply because the ukuleles I have are my personal property. I had throughout my career the opportunity to just be in um, schools for a brief period of time and then I moved on. This year is my fourth year at the same school and that's the first time in my career. So having 15 ukuleles, first of all, that's what I could afford and I also knew if I was moving schools, those would go with me. Since then, I have seen that teaching with partners works wonderfully with the younger grades because then they're watching other, they're watching the fingering for you and can help your partner and sometimes I'll say, hey, you need to help your partner. They're having problems getting their fingers in the right place. And it works wonderfully to be able to get them working together. They learn faster. And that is the reason why I use, use partners. For my older students, I would love to have a classroom set. At this point, I am not quite there, but I am hoping to use my uh, school monies next year. Uh, monies that we have earned to fund ukuleles for the entire uh, class. Now that we have the virus to deal with, I have to look at that and rethink about partners. I still would like partners to work with each other, so maybe I have, you know, I always say students, you know, who's number one, who's number two. Let's say the number ones are playing right now. Number twos, put your ukulele down. And can you help your partner with their fingering? I may have to switch that up when things happen um, in the fall. It's too hard to tell with the uncertainty of having to deal with this virus. It's going to change things up a bit. And I know that when we have to use instruments in the classroom, it may mean we change things too. So. Music teachers are resilient. We can uh, roll with the punches, and I know that we all have had to make last minute changes. This is just one of them. So I, my hope is that I can still do partner work, but maybe have more ukes for my older kids. To answer the question of what do I do about tuning, I do all the tuning, and uh, I love to use Luna brand ukuleles. That's my favorite. Uh, you can find them for uh, for sale on Peripol.com. P-E-R-I-P-O-L-E. Peripol is a wonderful company that provides musical instruments for music teachers. And I am very familiar with their incredible uh, work ethic and their customer service. I strongly suggest Luna. They will have um, Aquila brand strings and these things don't go out of tune. They are prime. So if you're looking for a student set uh, or for yourself even, there is a vintage Luna brand. The, the vintage series has wonderful ukuleles to use with students and these will not go out of tune. Just tune them up the first couple weeks. You'll have to be retuning, but then they'll stay. And for me, my ukulele stay tuned. If a student, I always tell them, if you feel it's out of tune, you bring it to me. And of course, if it's out of tune, I'll say, hey, good ear. Good, you, you've got a good ear. And an opportunity for praise is a wonderful thing. In um, I never let students tune them unless they bring their own and I know that they can tune it themselves. I do not let them tune my ukuleles. I've had dangerous injuries happen because students played with the tuning pegs. So tune it yourself and um, after a couple weeks 
the Luna brand will be t completely in tune for you so that you don't have to mess with it every single time. What ukuleles do I not like? I always say don't get the colored ones. Don't get the plastic ones. They may be sturdy uh, to use because uh, they're going to get knocked up a bit from kids, but they're not going to be in tune. So you really need to kind of look at what is going to stay in tune, otherwise you're going to torture yourself. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me. My contact information is at the end of this video. And you can email me with any questions. You can get the, um, here's the student version of ukulele ukulele and the teacher version. This is the full ORF arrangements in there and these are all of the songs that are in these volumes but without the ORF arrangements for students. $30 and $15 available on zellerware.com Z-E-L-L-E-R-W-E-A-R.com You can find them there. And if you are interested in a set of ukuleles for your classroom, please contact Parapol and let them know that Lavana sent you. If you say you want the Lavana price, you're going to get the best price that they have. And they are wonderful to deal with and will help you out there. So, again, ukulele ukulele on zellerware.com and ukuleles available and the banjo lele. Don't forget the banjo lele available at parapol.com.